resting potential. Now I'm going to change it to proteins of action potential. There's two, pro two proteins for action potential, and I'm going to draw one of each. And I'm going to go old school. This is the way I was taught about it. Um, this is called an inhibition gate. Um, the protein doesn't have this, really have this little ball and chain thing looking, ball and chain looking thing down here, but uh, it does have a, a, a structure that allows for what happens, um, although it's more complicated than the way I'm representing it. But you'll appreciate me not having you know that complicated version. So what we have here are two channels, one, two, and then another two channels, one, two. Um, these two channels, I'm going to name them. Both of them are voltage gated. We have the voltage gated sodium channel. And that is what this is. The voltage gated sodium channels. And then the other one, this one right here, is again voltage gated. But it's a voltage gated potassium channel. So voltage gated K plus channel. And that's what this one is supposed to be right next to it. Voltage gated sodium channels and voltage gated potassium channels. The axon is very rich in voltage gated sodium channels and voltage gated potassium channels. And that's what allows the action potential to happen. One other thing I want to do, I want to build my graph over here once again. And I want to show resting potential, minus 70 millivolts. That's resting potential. And then up here, at minus 55 millivolts, which is more positive than minus 70 millivolts, um, I'll have threshold. And I guess I'll put the plus 30 up here. Sorry if my scale's way off. That 30 millivolts is the maximum of an action potential's height. That's why we put it there. OK. Now let's say we're on this part of the axon. And an action potential came down, and it made the node of Ranvier before this depolarize. Positive charge flows in here, and it flows up to these channels. So you get positive charge. That positive charge is actually sodium ions. Those sodium ions come in and make the charge inside of here more positive. They bring this resting potential right up to threshold. And if you recall, what happens next is we get depolarization in this, and the inside of the cell becomes way positive. This is why that happens. The voltage-gated sodium channels, because of this charge change, because we reached resting potential, the voltage-gated sodium channels open. And I'm going to show that by opening these two parts of the sodium channel. Remember that the sodium potassium pump has been pumping sodium out here. So there's a much higher concentration of sodium out here. That sodium rushes into the cell. And that makes the inside of the cell more positive. So on this part of my graph for the action potential, right here at threshold, 
I could put um, voltage gated NA plus channels open. And that's what causes this depolarization. Up here at plus 30, voltage gated and a plus channels inactivate. And the way I represent that on the drawing here, I erase my sodium flowing. Um, the channel is still open. It's going to be open because we're past threshold. So this channel has what's called an inhibition gate, this little ball and stick thing that I drew there. And the ball comes up and blocks the sodium channel. So we don't get any more sodium coming into the cell. This is important because if we had sodium continuously coming into the cell, the channel would never close and the action potential would stay up there. And as we said earlier, that doesn't happen. So the inhibition of those sodium channels is important so that we can have the next action potential. So the sodium channel is now inhibited. And the next thing that happens, and you could say it happens at this peak and as we come down, remember that the charge returns to resting potential and this is repolarization, what I could say is that this is caused um, by the potassium channels opening. Remember that this positive charge coming in stimulated the sodium channels to open. It also stimulates the potassium channels to open but the potassium channels are a bit more slow. They're more slow to open and they're also more slow to close. So the sodium channels opened up really quick and then the potassium channels opened up just after them and we return back down towards, towards um, resting potential. The reason the charge goes back to being negative on the inside, remember that the sodium potassium pump pumped a lot of potassium in here. So the concentration of potassium in here is very high. And potassium is positively charged. So when this channel opens, the potassium rushes out. And all of that positive charge leaving causes the inside, the inside was positive when the sodium rushed in, but now that positive charge is leaving and the outside becomes positive once again and the inside becomes negative once again. That is repolarization caused by the voltage gated potassium channels. And now we get back down here. Remember that this was the absolute refractory period. If we're having an action potential we can't have another one at the exact same time, so it's absolute refractory. But then also remember the relative refractory period. The, the membrane becomes more negative than resting for a short period. That, the reason it becomes more negative for a short period, remember I said that the potassium channels are more slow to open? They're also more slow to close. They are slow to close, so we keep letting this positive charge leave and we become even more negative on the inside of the cell. The cell becomes hyperpolarized for a short time. It becomes more negative than at rest for a short time because the potassium channels are slow to close. So I guess maybe I'll write that on here. More negative. than minus 70 millivolts or more negative than resting potential. I don't have room to write the rest. Uh, let's take it over here. Because of 
the slow to close potassium channels. And specifically, the slow to close voltage gated potassium channels. Um, another thing that I could put on here, remember we, we reached threshold and that stimulated the opening of these channels. Once we reach threshold coming back down and repolarization, the voltage gated channels at least start to close. So from this point here, if I go back to what my channels are doing, remember this inhibition gate has been keeping the sodium channel closed up here? Instead of that, the channel just goes back to being closed. It goes back to the way it was before the action potential started. And the same thing for the potassium channel. And the only thing to remember about that is that it takes a little bit longer for this potassium channel to close but it goes back to being closed. All right. Here's the reason I drew these proteins over here. Everything that just happened with these other proteins on the left, the sodium that came in, it diffuses over in this direction, and that is going to stimulate this next area of the membrane to undergo the exact same sequence that we just went through over here. This is called propagation of the action potential. This is happening at the next area of the axon, the next node of Ranvier, or node of Ranvier. So the sodium that diffused in diffuses down to the next set of channels. Sodium channel opens, and we get depolarization. Sodium channel inactivates. Potassium channel is more slow to open, but they open, and we get repolarization. Potassium leaves and we get repolarization and then we hyperpolarize and get into the relative refractory period. And then that activity that happened here goes on to the next area of the membrane and we keep going down the line. So that's how action potential happens at the molecular level. There's one other thing I want to tell you about that I didn't mention earlier and that is remember back when we were talking about resting potential. The potassium leak channels make the cell membrane more permeable to potassium. The fact that neurons and muscle cells are more permeable to potassium means that alterations in potassium level in the body cause a more dramatic effect than alterations in sodium ions in the body. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is we are worried about a person having too much potassium in their bloodstream. And we are worried about a person having not enough potassium in their bloodstream. The reason that we worry about potassium concentration and we don't worry as much about sodium concentration is because the neuron is more, is more permeable to the potassium. You could eat three or four big chunks of sodium, well, probably not pure sodium, but sodium chloride like you find in table salt, you could take three or four tablespoons of sodium and drink it down with some water, and it wouldn't have a huge effect on you except that it would increase your blood pressure for a short time until your urinary system could clear it. But if you took two or three tablespoons of potassium chloride and ate them, it would kill you. Potassium levels affect the body a lot more than sodium levels do. And it's because, again, the neuron membrane is more permeable to potassium because of the potassium leak channel. So that's why we're worried about potassium. Um, another thing to help you remember about potassium, when um, people on death row, if they are given lethal injections in order to kill them, the lethal injection includes potassium. That's the actual killing agent that's in a lethal injection. So I hope that reinforces into you once again that potassium levels are very important. When they get altered too much, we get into big trouble. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me. 
And the next thing that we're going to talk about is communication at the synapse. Thanks again for watching.